it's interesting that Matt Prinka would say, uh, I saw what was possible, and then I wanted to attain that. And I think it's a real, that's a positive way to create change in someone. But I think that takes a unique person. Yep. A lot of people experience something, and they, they make the decision point, like you said, I'm either going to rise to that, or that didn't actually happen, and they turn the blinders on. I think a more consistent way to invoke meaningful change is always through a stressful experience with some level of pub, uh, public vulnerability that leads to an extreme failure. It's got to be hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want you to lose. I want you to fail. You have to. And that failure, that's going to stick with you. And that's where we see the change. And on that comes the responsibility on the instructor side, which is the part that I really nerd out. It is cool, the things we do, but how we do it and what we do, that's the, the more important part. You have, and I don't think a lot of people understand it, a huge weight and responsibility with the information that you're presenting to these people who might leave the course and within 10 minutes leaving have to use it and they're going to they're gonna think, whatever that guy just told me is going to save my life. I'm going to do it. And uh, if you told them bullshit, yeah, they'll buy it. So you have this huge responsibility in what you're saying and the experience that you're giving them, knowing you're intentionally giving them probably a failure. That failure is going to happen in front of everyone else in the group, and they're all going to see this guy, a man, an adult, who's on the verge of tears because he just shot the wrong person, and he's got all this anxiety and stress and doesn't know how to manage it. That's a, res that's a hard responsibility. That's a delicate responsibility that you have to manage. Uh, I think that's what creates impactful change. More so than, uh, wow, that's an amazing fighter. He does really good. I didn't know I could do that. Right. I want to do that. Right. And that is, I feel like I'm that person. I, I can watch it and I'm like, that's a thing. I want it. Right. But I, think, I don't think that's a normal I don't no. think it's a consistent way for change. Right. For, yeah. for some people, it's about the ego, right? They want to get better. That they came wanna, up yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be better and better and <laughs> yeah. better. That is right? me. It's yeah. not. It's not about holy shit. I just almost died. You yeah. know. And and now I'm not just learning so that I can beat Brian. I'm learning so that I don't get, you know, killed. I remember uh, or <clears throat> in my law enforcement career, I remember, you know, uh, a, a grizzled veteran telling me, you know, all that shit you do where you drive out of state and, you know, eat ramen noodles and sleep in your car <laughs> or do all that, that kung fu shit, you know, that's awesome, but you, you really learn this job by experience. Experience is the best way to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, um, not too much longer after that, after having some experiences that no one regionally had had, um, what I realized the hard way is that um, one experience can cost you your life. Mm. Experience is expensive. Really, probably the best we can do in training is make an attempt at facilitating an experience, a realistic experience, without the consequence mm -hmm. of actually killing another human being, being killed or injured yourself, and going through a horrendous legal battle, being doxxed or whatever. So, so uh, a, a, facil a, a facilitated experience without real-world consequence in an arena that demands shared public vulnerability. All of that, the synergy of all that, is what really, really makes the course work what it is. So to, to Brian's point, well, to all of, your, all of the points here, I think that is the challenge with what it is that you're teaching, right? Which I know you know that's an obvious statement, but in all, in so many other things you can get an immediate feedback mechanism of whether what you did worked or not, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you're doing it in a very controlled environment where there's a bunch of knowns. And there's generally, while there may be many ways to solve the problem, there is the best way to solve the problem. But because we don't have the time to teach you all of those other ways, we're going to give you this thing, which is that solution that you were talking about, Brian, where you let them leave, right? And you have, you have, that should weigh heavily on you. Did I give them the right thing? But particularly in your point, Scott, knowing that, dude, that, that's probably not the right thing. And like, I can't yeah. keep doing that uh, is, a, is, an, is an interesting thing to think about. And... 
again, like just with, with what it is that you're teaching, the realities of where that fits into somebody's life, whether that's a law enforcement officer or just the average every, the soccer mom, yeah. right, who's worried about protecting herself and her kids and not being vulnerable and whatever else. The, the, the or a door kicker downrange that's got to come back to his family. Exactly. And protect his brother. However, it, the only way for that to be tested in most, most places is to actually having gone through that experience. And so um, I, I think a lot of people teaching stuff right, haven't had the experience to be able to speak from. And, you know, we call them, Dave Grossman calls them virgins <laughs> discussing sex. Yeah, this is, this is a really good way of looking at it. Which, which I, yeah, that's kind of accurate. You know? yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a huge Grossman fan. Yeah. I, think he's, I think he has utility and, and people need to hear, some people need to hear his messaging. But that particular statement about virgins discussing sex is so apropos when it comes to this business. Yeah, he, there, there are so many, most people teaching in this business have not experienced actual, real, lethal, visceral violence. But he, like you said, um, he says this a lot, you don't have to have experience, but if you have an experience that you can pull a cogent, meaningful, relative point, then we use it. I got... Uh, robbed in Brazil by two two kids once. You did, yeah. True story. True story. Okay. Uh, my family's from Brazil, and so I still have oh, family gotcha. over there. I was there. Two kids tried to rob me. It worked out okay. But, he looks Brazilian, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> very. <laughs> you can hear it in my accent. I didn't pick that up when I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when we teach the course, I don't mention that. I don't mention every time I got into a fight over a gun because it doesn't help. They're not here to hear the Craig story or the Brian story. They're here to see what we can do for them so that they leave better than when they came. That's an important distinction yeah. to make. So we don't tell war stories yeah. unless there's a specific teachable relative, rel relative point that we can give from it. Then it doesn't become the... The, the Brian show or the yeah. Craig show. I tell like two I tell two war stories over the entire weekend, over 24 hours. There are two. And I only tell those two to support a very specific point of instruction. That's it. Yeah. So it's intentional. It's, it's absolutely it's not, intentional. Not because it's the Craig it show. Happens at the, it happens not at to the, say, look at me, I'm cool. It happens <laughs> at the same time, the same way, every single time. It's, a, it's at a very specific point in the instruction, Okay. So yeah, it supports, you know, our, 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 our content. It's also one of the challenges with the content because to be able to replicate it without Craig is not easy. Mm -hmm. Not having those specific pieces of the story to, to impact, you know, the lesson that you're trying to teach, you know? So that's, and I think probably one of the, the most unique things about ShivWorks is there are not a lot of people that know how or would be able to teach it. And unfortunately, there's no instructor program for ShivWorks. Right. It's all mentorship, mm -hmm. which is awesome. You know, it's awesome because I think it, it, it keeps the quality and the, the uh, integrity of, the, of the, the impact of the lessons and the impact of the experience that, that ShivWorks gives people.